So in this study we did a comparative effectiveness uh, analysis comparing concurrent chemoradiotherapy for locally advanced cancers, many different disease sites, delivered with photon radiotherapy, okay, which is the, the common sort of standard approach, versus proton radiotherapy. And there's limited data um, comparing the, the, these two treatments, um, very, very limited data prospectively. And we wanted to see if proton therapy, which theoretically might be able to reduce um, side effects by reducing the amount of normal tissue that's radiated, whether that would in fact translate to clinically meaningful reductions in toxicity without sacrificing you know, cancer outcomes. So our primary endpoint was um, acute 90 day from start of treatment, uh, grade three or higher, uh, CTC toxicities. So these are the severe adverse events that typically lead to hospitalizations. We also had a secondary endpoints, the CTC grade two and higher toxicities, decline in ECOG performance status during treatment, and then disease-free survival and overall survival. And our hypothesis was that proton therapy would reduce these acute severe side effects without reduction in cancer control outcomes. So to do this, we did a comparative effectiveness study where we um, included almost 1,500 patients treated at the University of Pennsylvania with uh, curative intent treatment for non-metastatic disease um, from 2011 to 2016. Um, most of these patients had uh, head and neck cancer, lung cancer, primary brain cancer, or GI cancers, but there were also gynecologic cancers represented as well. Um, and importantly, we gathered the toxicity data prospectively. So each toxicity that the patients experienced was scored on their weekly on treatment visit using standardized forms. And we also gathered the uh, oncologic follow-up data for recurrence prospectively as well. We also gathered a large and very complete uh, database consisting of clinical, demographic, pathologic, and treatment variables, including detailed radiation-specific variables like the planning target volume size, the dose, the number of fractions given, uh, etc. We enlisted the services of Nandita Mitra, who's an excellent biostatistician, and she led a, a machine learning ensemble propensity uh, analysis. And based on that analysis, we found that there was um, a more than two-thirds reduction in um, rates of grade three and higher toxicities uh, in favor of the proton arm. There was a similarly statistically significant reduction in grade two toxicities and decline in ECOG performance status. And there was no difference in disease-free or overall survival, which we did not anticipate since these patients were treated by the same doctors using the same dose and chemotherapy agents and the same dose of radiotherapy. And I think that this, this research, I think, points towards some very fruitful potential avenues of research. I think one of them is it shows that we may be able to further intensify chemoradiotherapy treatments with either higher doses of radiation or uh, more aggressive systemic therapies. And I think it also points to a role for, in the future, broadening inclusion criteria for concurrent chemoradiotherapy trials to include older, sicker patients uh, who may be able to benefit, but who currently are not being offered uh, concurrent chemoradiotherapy. The take home message is that you know, now we have you know, data from a very large patient cohort, okay, the largest that's been reported, that's showing the significant improvement in, in reducing toxicity without reducing oncologic outcomes. Because it's always possible to reduce toxicity, but in the process worsen oncologic outcomes. Um, so I think that to oncologists, I would say that, that we should um, really go out of our way now to try to open and enroll patients on clinical trials comparing proton versus photon uh, to try to get um, even better and even more data to help um, make decisions. But I think that, you know, to me this data is very compelling um, and based on it, if I were a patient, I would want to receive concurrent chemoradiotherapy with protons instead of photons. But again, it really should be up to the radiation oncologist and the treating doctor to make those determinations. And unfortunately, proton therapy is, is just not widely available. So it's not something that I think patients, uh, many patients would have access to. And that's unfortunate. And I hope that will change as protons become less expensive uh, and more widely available. But we need data like this to show that protons have value 
to try to spur, I think, development and interest and funds toward making it more economically uh, comparable to photon radiation.